You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. This is Matt Reynolds. I'm here with Andrew Jackson and Nikki Sims. We're here in Springfield, Missouri, in my beautiful library. Surrounded mostly by liquor, but also some books. <laughs> Glad you're here to join us this morning. You probably listen at 4.30 or so a.m. when this podcast comes out. I assume you are all refreshing furiously on Monday morning. We are here with you on your drive time commute. That's right. And <laughs> that again. To your office from your kitchen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, COVID's over. I know. I listen to podcasts when People I People go back now. to work. I don't know. <laughs> I listen in the shower. I can't hear loudly enough if I'm in the shower. Oh, I put the Wonder Room in the shower. Mm. You hear loudly? It's okay. not loud enough. All right, grammar <laughs> police. <laughs> so we got some questions for... Yes, I do, actually. Things are intense for me. <laughs> okay. Wow. You've sent your questions in, and we're going to answer some. Nikki Sims. All right. First question, coming from Kyle. Hey, Kyle. He says, my wife is going to start lifting with me, but the standard bar is too heavy for her to start with on the press. Since this isn't a long-term situation, I hesitate to buy an aluminum bar. Any recommendations for a solution? Yep. Buy an aluminum bar. Yeah. Yep. It's the best way to go. It's <laughs> worth it. They're not that expensive. They're 150 bucks, I think. Aren't yeah. They? yeah. And she can use it for a long time, actually, on a yep. lot of the lifts. So if you guys are lifting together, it means you'll have a second bar. If anyone ever else yeah. starts to lift that can't handle the biggest, I mean, the standard bar yet, it's great. I've used the Aluminite bar a ton. Yeah. It's really great. Yeah, I even use it for a landmine rose because I stick it in the corner and yep. don't care uh, enough yeah. about it. I mean, I care about it, clearly. Pearls, LTEs, things like that as well. Yeah, I had a lady come in last week. She was awesome. So if you're listening, shout out. First time she's ever lifted, I've coached her husband before and she was coming up from Northwest Arkansas and that was one of the things we wanted to figure out is what bar do they need? They just had 45-pound bars. So do we need the 33-pound, you know, 15-kilo Bella bar? or the aluminum bar, and she was able to do everything with the 33-pound bar. So I told her, I was like, I think you'll like this one better because you were fine doing the press. She was able to go up to like 40 pounds on the press. And so, but yeah, I think the aluminum bar is just fine. The aluminum bar, you can get them like 15 pounds versus 33 for the Bella bar. It's a good place to start. Yeah, I agree. Definitely your best option. Yeah. You can still get one on Amazon right now. I just Googled it. 150 bucks. There you go. Worth it. Definitely worth it. All right. Also, don't say it's not a long-term solution. Yeah. Agreed. Probably train for the next several years. Do it forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Question two. This one comes from Nick. What are you guys usually doing between sets? Sitting, standing, walking around, something else. I'm usually pacing back and forth because that's what I naturally want to do. I'm wondering what others do and if there's a best practice. Mm -hmm. I'd like the idea of doing what comes naturally. You know, walking around, pacing is good. If you want to be more productive, I recommend getting a timer so that you can actually focus on something like Noah Milstein. Shout out to him. I know reads like heavy books. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. In between sets. That's but, intense. You know, he sets the timer, picks yeah. it up, goes. Yep. Off. yep. Here we go. Yep. Four minutes. So my best practice recommendation, that option aside, is to not do something that's going to take your attention yes. significantly outside of lifting. 100% agree. So if walking around keeps you focused on the moment and mm -hmm. in... We know all those Sims is doing Instagram. Yeah. Twitter sets. Yeah. I don't do that much Instagram I'm between sets. I'm a hard time. Because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes people will DM me questions about lifting and I'm like, this is my time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the phone in general is you have to be very careful with. Yeah. And in particular, because something will come up, I've noticed, that upsets me or takes me out of the mindset of focusing on training, and that is not optimal. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very selective. Even if I'm texting with someone before I go lifting, before I go to lift, I'll be like, okay, sorry, it's lifting time right now. Right, yeah. I'm going to table this discussion. Yep. Yeah. But I do a lot of walking around and pacing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do a lot of pacing. I try to make sure to look up towards the sky instead of down towards the floor because it's a woo-woo thing. <laughs> More positive to look upward. There you go. <laughs> I had a coach that once that would not let the room sit, like removed all chairs. Like you had to stand the entire session. Just as like a mind thing, yeah. you know, like active rest. This yeah. is what active rest is, folks. Right. 
you guys have seen us lately. We don't screw around in the gym. <laughs> so I, Matt yeah. and his wife are very fast exercisers. Yeah, we'll do the entire trainers. workout in like 35 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> so it's, I'm going and then my wife is training or doing a set. I'm loading weights on for the next one and she gets done. And a lot of times I'm like, I'm going, stay out of my way and I'm stepping into the rack. You know, we have four foot deep rack. So one of us is usually inside the rack. The other one's outside the rack and we're rolling. So, I mean, yeah. there's not much time to, to sit around. Mm -hmm. I just want to get it. And I like that. It's in and out. It's, I don't feel like I'm sacrificing many reps, if any. If you haven't done this before, I think it's a really good, fun, especially for like a press workout, like two reps every minute on the minute on press, and you increase the weight like 10 pounds every set. So you start at 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, hmm. 15 minutes. You're yeah. 225 yeah. for a double. I've definitely and then you hit 225 for a double. But I mean, it's funny that you like, <laughs> I'll go up and hit 225 or 245 for a double and be like, I mean, that's pretty good for me. Yeah. Even if I had all the rest and I'm like, how much I'm wasting a lot of time resting. You can get used to the short rest period. So I'm not saying rush through everything, but for me, I would rather get more work done in less time. So we're hurrying. All right. Here's the next one coming from Bobby. Bobby's asking about good genes. Wait, with a J. With a J? Okay. <laughs> Good jeans for people with thick thighs. <laughs> he says, I'm in need of some new jeans. I've had some barbell apparel jeans that have lasted a good three years of constant wear, but they are starting to give out. Is this still the company to go with or are there others that you guys prefer? Thanks. Fellas? Big fan of Michael Kors khaki. Okay. You know, it's not jeans, jeans, but they're not jeans. But, you <laughs> Don't know, you have jeans? Well, I do, but uh, prefer the business schedule. <laughs> well, you, you know, <laughs> you prefer to train in business schedule. <laughs> oh, boy. Don't get my. That's like, that's like Macy's you know? brand. Yeah. yeah do well, that. you know, just <laughs> like, you wait for those like sales. It's like Mervyn's brand. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, Matt sales, has, some, has a better answer. Sales. I need to go look. I know I've got a handful of. Do bonobos make jeans? No, I do like their khakis and shorts are the best ones. But the, I do have, so the cheaper option, American Eagle does make good jeans for guys that will fit. But you got to get the right cut. Obviously, you're not doing the skinny jeans or the slim fit jeans. And so some of those are fine. You've got to get the right ones so they're not too juvenile. I'm not looking for the ones with all the, with all the holes and tears in the front. And too many like cat whiskers and stuff. Bedazzled. Or bedazzled on the pockets. Like really, that's probably the most important thing that you don't have those. I feel bad because I know I've got a bunch over there that, so I've done, what's the box I get from Nordstrom? Nordstrom? What is that thing called? I don't know what it's called. Damn it. The box from Nordstrom. I mean, <laughs> we're not sponsored, so. Yeah. What's like Stitch Fit? Stitch Fit? Is that what it's called? Stitch Fix. Fix. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they'll send you stuff, and so I get stuff from them, and sometimes they get jeans that fit really well, and I know I've got some that are from England or whatever, and they're fine. Then so you have to get them tailored, right? But that's what I was going to say. So the key is you get jeans and then you go spend 15 bucks to get them tailored, 20 bucks to get them tailored. I mean, if you're going to spend $100 on a pair of jeans, $125 on a pair of jeans, and I get it, some people are going to hear that and be like, whoa, that's crazy. But you spend $100 or $125 on a pair of jeans, they last they for can 10 last years. They last a long ass time. They last forever. And then you tailor them to fit you well. And that's the key. So I've heard Levi's makes some good ones for an athletic fit. I have not worn a pair of Levi's in a long, but I mean, I've heard that. So, yeah. you know, uh, speaking of making your jeans last a long time, I picked up a tip from uh, who's the guy that's doing the masterclass on fashion, like on the actual, the actual masterclass.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Halston. Ty or something. Ty something. Yeah. Anyways. You don't have to wash your jeans. Put them in the freezer. Put them in the freezer. Mm -hmm. Kills the bacteria. Unless you spill something on them. It's not everybody know this. If you spill something on it. You don't wash your jeans, Well, guys. I'm sharing this with the world because mm -hmm. it was news. It's, it's actually probably, I mean, maybe, were you washing your jeans? I wash my jeans every time. Oh, I no, wash no, no, them no. frequently. We don't wash Don't jeans. put your Michael Kors in the freezer. No. Because you know. something you will happen. To, you definitely yeah. have to wash those. <laughs> and but they're wrinkle free usually. For the three ladies who are listening, <laughs> Madewell. Madewell makes great jeans. Mm, yeah, good amount of stretch. They're long. If you're also tall, yeah, definitely recommend Madewell. Did you guys ever actually rip jeans during your strength training? Oh, yeah. In the crotch? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I blew out a lot of pants. I blew out a really nice pair of khakis once mm -hmm. when I was a student teacher, and they had me come up during my conference hour. I was teaching history. And they were like, can you show the weightlifting team during conference hour, like how to do stuff? And so I had this, you know, every teacher has a conference hour off. I came up here, I'm in my like polo and khaki pants. And I'm like, this is how you squat. You know, you sit back 
and shove your hips back. And I was like, <laughs> rip. <laughs> and I spent the rest of the day, the baseball coach out of like the lost and found, gave me a pair of basketball shorts that were like oh, below no. the knee. So at least giant baggy yeah. basketball shorts and like a white polo the rest of the day. It was awful. <laughs> Definitely had to borrow shorts at the gym a few times. Yep. And my stress test for a pair of pants has been for the last 10 years or so if it can survive a wedding dance party. Ah, well, Andrew really gets down at a wedding I, dance party. How often do you wear jeans to a wedding? Never. Okay. That's why I recommend Michael Kors. <laughs> this is why he goes with that. <laughs> They're the only ones that dress like. <laughs> that was the follow-up question is, how about jeans for a wedding? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Barbell Apparel is a good pair of jeans. They do stretch well if you can find the right pair that fits you well. I really like the fit of Barbell Apparel. I'm not crazy about their colors. You got to find the right. I'm really picky about like the color of denim. Yeah. And if it's too blue, if it's like blue, like, nope, not interested. So mm -hmm. I didn't like Barbell Apparel yeah. jeans. I, I do like the way they fit, yeah. but otherwise, no. Okay. Next All one. All right. Here we go. More about outfits. There we go. This one's coming from Ryan. What's the go to for good shorts, mostly for outside of training? Bonobos for me. Yeah. By far. Bonobos. And let's just get this out of the way first. Regardless of the brand, no one listening to this podcast should ever wear shorts longer than seven inch in seam. <laughs> seven inch, for all intents and purposes, you are a gangster from South Central Los Angeles for a seven inch in seam. Or Kirk Server. So, he might well, it. right. Or you're <laughs> 6'11, which is not the same thing. <laughs> but, also, jean shorts, just take a minute to think do I have any jean shorts? And if you do, men, walk to them <laughs> and then pick them up and then throw them away. Yes. However, no more jean shorts. You are currently wearing jean shorts. My jean shorts have a three inch inseam. They're white. <laughs> it's acceptable. Okay. By the way, how big are my inseams right now? Ooh. <laughs> Two and a half. Andrew's about a four. What shorts am I wearing right He's now? He's got pretty shorty. Are those bonobos? They might be. Hold on. I love the bonobos. Bonobos. Taking my pants Here's off. the problem with bonobos is they're so popular, they sell out really fast, but they fit well. I'm a big fan of the five inch bonobos. The other ones that fit well, I wish they were a little more professional are bird dogs and then the other one the ones that i wear in the gym are lulu so i like lulu so i just checked my shorts seven inch seam bonobos andrew's gonna Still have to take find his the pants tag. off can't, to find, can't find the brand why don't you just pull them all <laughs> <laughs> just take them off all right <laughs> and andrew is <laughs> taking off his pants <laughs> so <laughs> oh my god he's wearing even worse shorts he's wearing me. boxers <laughs> not boxer briefs <laughs> actual boxers in the back back tag there it is right there Bonobos, bonobos, seven inch seam, there it is. seven inch seam, bonobos, seven inch. So that's as long and big, and they're a little baggy. It's time, really? To, yeah, you need yeah, I, actually. Yeah, it's time to go yeah. in one size on the waist. And Can I get up. these tailored? Yeah, you can get those tailored. Okay, I take an to inch the off five, the five inch. What are those like? Thirty eights. You can go to thirty sixes or thirty sixes. Go to the thirty fours. Whatever it is. <laughs> okay, good to know. Also, not bragging. A little humble brag. Wearing my first set of XLTs. Yeah, looking good. For the good. first time in 15 really years. Too, down to the XL. Yeah. I'm no longer a 2X. Pretty awesome. Which is sort of bad for my pocketbook because now I got to buy all new clothes. But He's got a pocketbook. What are you going to do? <laughs> so, it's worth it. It's worth yeah, so hard. 256 this morning. So good. Wow. Amazing. That's rad. After a big dinner, too. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I weigh 256 Although, after dinner. Interestingly, big dinner, but you couldn't eat. I struggled to eat. You guys, yeah, yeah. I, just, I don't have the belly room anymore it's kind of the positive feedback mechanism of yeah. changing your diet yeah, i just don't like feeling bloated i think it's yep. like it's so yeah. uncomfortable yeah that's what i like about not deciding if food is good or bad but just deciding if you like how it makes you feel yeah mm -hmm. or if you dislike yep. how it makes you totally feel. Yeah. that's been one of the biggest changes with working with jillian so far for me is going from like trying to hit certain numbers to making better or different food choices and paying attention to how it feels yeah and reacting to that instead. Yeah, I have of, no desire to have like fast food or like greasy food. Yeah. It, I feel so like I don't even want it. Right. I mean, there's some junk food that I want, right? Sure. So I've talked about like I, you know, like I still Box sort of crave like Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme <laughs> donuts for like I'm like, I really want hot Krispy Kreme. I went and got Andy's, which is frozen custard here. Got a famous frozen custard place in the southern US and it's from Springfield, Missouri. But even then I got the thing and I ate maybe half, probably closer to a third. And I was like, yeah. Oh, is that your leftover still in the yeah, fridge? I just, that's uh, yeah. fine. No, I, no, that's fine. I just dumped it. <laughs> I just dumped it. Okay. But I was just like, I was, you know, I just got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm satisfied. Now, the thing about Krispy Kreme, which is my truest weakness, if there are hot Krispy Kreme donuts, I'm not interested in eating one. Like, I need between six and eight. 
Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, like, I can go to Andy's, and I've I've done this several times since I've been losing weight, and I'll go get the little kids. It's literally like a quarter cup, and it's fine. I'm like, that's eh, enough. It's enough yeah. for like kind of satisfy the. But Krispy Kreme, it would just piss me off if I had one or two. It's like Bizarro Highlander. There can't be only one. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I want more. There so. can only be more. So there's your question about shorts, which yep. we turned into Krispy Kreme donuts. And the I've stripped. Basic, yeah, basic rule is, here's the rule. Smaller, better for everybody, right? Not talking for what ladies, talking but about probably here? is better. Smaller shorts. Shorts, okay. Probably better for ladies too, but I'll let Nikki say that, but I'm not making it. Yeah, I'm talking for guys at this point, like, listen, you guys are listening to this podcast. You're 35 to 50 years old. Stop wearing basketball shorts. So the first rule is <laughs> yes. throw all your basketball shorts in the trash. And jean shorts. Throw all your jorts in the trash uh, and throw all your cargo shorts in the trash. If it has one of those straps that's meant for you to store a paintbrush, throw it away. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you have two options for shorts. Option one, well-fitted, like Lululemon style, five-inch inseam workout type shorts. And two, tightly fitted khaki type shorts, like chino shorts yes. from a company like Bonobos, also short. And nice and tight. You should be able to tell that there's a difference between your stomach and your butt. So you should be able to tell that you have a waist. Right. And you should be able to tell that there's difference between your butt and your hamstrings. So they should be right. fitted enough to show that. I just have to say, I mean, we're trying to overcome major cultural forces here. Right. Because get it. for that demographic that grew up the world. or came of age in the 90s. They're all wearing cargo pants. The University of Michigan <laughs> basketball team that changed right. shorts forever because you're talking about a generation that grew up thinking that just short shorts were the uncoolest thing I ever. Know, but they're actually and the cool big again. baggy awesome. shorts were what the cool people well, wore. Well, I mean, think about the lifestyle. Like, we spend all this time in the gym Make training, yeah. making our yeah. legs jacked. Right. And you're like, what, you got to wear these giant triple X shorts below your knees? Like, that's crazy. I did that up until like a year ago. I was still wearing below the knee yeah. shorts. And by the way, for swim trunks, on a side note, and I realize everybody gives me a hard time about the Speedo. I, listen, at some point you hit the age, you just don't care. Speedo it up. Everyone it's great. Everyone gives them a hard time. <laughs> so I let Matt to give, wishes someone would give him a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> I let to give everyone my hard time with my Speedo. Oh, boy. The rule on swimming trunks is three inch inseam or less. That's the deal. <laughs> Let's move on to another important body part. Okay. This All one's right. coming from Kurt. Do you know of a potential cause of forearm soreness from the main lifts? What makes it better? Soreness seems to be in the extensor muscle on the upper part of the forearm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would guess he's probably carrying too much weight in his hands, yep. particularly You're during the squat. You're resisting the bar on your squat. Not carrying the bar on your back. Yep. So what would help? What's a good cue for him for that? One I've tried not too long ago was point your fingernails to the floor which helps you kind of flex your wrist hmm. a little yeah. bit. That's one. You know, that's an uh, external cue, if you will. Another is I like to bring people's attention into carrying the bar on their back. Yeah. That's just a really, you know, kind of basic one. Make sure that they can feel the load mostly on their back and not in their hands. Yeah, if you can get to the point where you're squeezing your shoulder blades together enough that you can start relaxing your grip, that's good. So do what you have to do so that you can relax your grip more on the bar. Yep. And don't wind knuckle it. Yep. You might be bending your elbows on the deadlift too. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, that's, that's true. an interesting one. Yeah. Or maybe it's not coming from the list. Maybe you're doing <laughs> well, chin-ups and pull-ups or something. Or the things that make your forearms mm. sore. <laughs> Which just happened in my life Also, before. get a good forearm massage. That just helps everything. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right, here we go. Question from Tom on Donnie Thompson's bow tie. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Okay, would you recommend or not... Donnie Thompson's bow tie for people with shoulder pain or bad shoulders. It seems to both pull the shoulders back and provide some compression on the shoulders, not quite to the degree of knee wraps, but to some degree. I wear it when I bench press specifically, and things certainly feel better. Thanks. I would never wear it when you bench press. I have no idea what he's talking about. So it's this thing that's sort of like the opposite of a slingshot goes on the back of your body, wraps yeah. around the front of your shoulders, and it really kind of puts you in a good posture. Oh. Think about like sort of an elastic, really intense elastic band that puts you in good posture. Quote, so, unquote, good posture. Right. I think it's fine to put it on to sort of feel like it's sort of proprioceptive feedback that mm. says, good posture, you're doing all right here. Don't slouch. Mm -hmm. I think that stuff's fine. And it seems like it could really change the angle of attack on the pec. I would never lift in one. Yeah. Like it's not a good idea. Why not? 
one, because I want you to be able to put yourself in the correct position and not have something yank you into position. And so that's, you know, yeah, I mean, it's just, you should be able to lay down on a bench press and put your thoracic back in extension and retract your shoulder blades without something pulling your shoulder blades into retraction. Yeah. So have you ever tried one? Yeah, I put one on and it does feel good. And it's like the big concrete things, the giant tubes he rolls on. It look like the foam roller, but they weigh like 500 pounds. Oh, and you right. Roll that on. Yeah. The, and they feel great too, right? So I want to be clear that I don't want to crap on stuff that makes you feel better. I actually like that stuff. I don't think we have to have always empirical evidence that says the thing like heals something. I don't, I don't think it does, but I do stuff that makes me feel good. It's fine. Like it makes you feel good. Feels good. Better helps sort of feel like you're in a better position. You know, I slouch really bad. We're, we're up here in the library talking in leather chairs, but when I sit in my office chair and I do the podcast or talk on the microphone, I sit with bad posture because I lean into my microphone and over Zoom calls or podcasts, I end up having bad posture in my upper thoracic and cervical spine and I ended up kind of hunching and talking into the microphone and I feel like crap. And it, honestly, probably if I put a bow tie on and did my podcast, I'd probably feel well. better. The second line of the product description is in a time when the average person spends much of their day working at a computer, looking at a cell phone, or stuck driving in traffic, the problem of slouching is real. Okay, it doesn't say that. <laughs> it says it's all too common. But hold on. Mm -hmm. The Thompson formal bow tie is only designed specifically for serious athletes. Well, so oh. it is not for the average person. So who is this? Kurt that's asking who is the, the DTBT. Mm -hmm. So if you're not a serious athlete, don't buy. Don't even go to the website. You, no, not interested. <laughs> From Tom. Well, I mean, you're talking about the body tempering? Yeah, body tempering. Yeah, similar sort you of thing. You know, it's amazing because that stuff does feel good. It feels great. I mean, it doesn't feel good at first, right, but then right, it feels right. good. Afterwards, it feels great. I always have mixed feelings about that stuff. I kind of feel like if it's not detrimental to your training, sure. meaning that you're having to spend an excessive amount of time or money Yes, and something makes you feel good, why not? Now, I'm not going to recommend it. I mean, just put yourself in the situation of you're coaching somebody, especially like an online, so you're not there to see them put it on. Sure. They submit their videos and you're like, what are you wearing? I'm like, well, it's a Donnie Thompson bow tie. DTBT. Why isn't it up here on your neck? <laughs> like it's a, <laughs> because it's giant because Donnie Thompson made it and the guy weighs 400 pounds. <laughs> And so it's Johnny Thompson sized bow tie, but it fits over my arms. <laughs> so it's, I was going to wear the shorts. <laughs> Donny Thompson, by the way, basically wears cargo shorts all the time. So oh, I don't yeah. know what else you need to know. Wow. A cargo short wearing guy. Wow. No, he's fine. Super nice guy. I've talked to him. <laughs> listen, I've talked to the guy several times. Super nice. He's a super kind guy. He commented on my squat once on Instagram. Oh, really? Did he ask you if you was trained your... Was it positive your or negative? <laughs> He gave me a positive comment for a PR squat. Man, that's said, pretty nice rad. Job. What did you hashtag to get him to see your squat? I have no idea, but it was one of my proudest moments. That's really you know? neat. No, it's perfectly fine. And I think the guy obviously is well-meaning and well-intentioned. I think the stuff he does tends to make people feel better. And maybe it does good. I don't know that it doesn't. And I'm just like you. If yeah. it makes you just like Andrew. Yeah. If it like we sat in the hot tub last night, I like a sauna. Mm -hmm. And I can't prove any of that stuff actually helps. But I feel better when it's over. Yeah. And so if you want to body temper and put on the bow tie, I think it's all fine. I just try to stay away from those things while I'm training. Yeah. I wouldn't wear it for the bench press. And it's one of those things that's just like, it might feel good, but it's not the answer to all your problems. Sure. Are you guys ready for the final question? Yeah. I like this one. All right. Setting the scene. It's 11 p.m. Mm. on Saturday mm -hmm. at the block party. Oh, oh, still a sleep party. <laughs> you might have had a few drinks and you're getting tired. Oh, boy. You need a solid dance track to rally and bring up the energy level. Duh. What song are you requesting from the DJ? Thong Song by Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> the thong, the thong, thong, thong. <laughs> no? I'm going to take my bonobo shorts. No. <laughs> <laughs> Little sandstorm. <laughs> We're totally dating ourselves here, too. Dude, I'm going for the Bee Gees, Staying Alive. Ooh, that yeah. one is Stayin impossible alive. to not dance to. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Andrew, what are your favorite songs to dance to at weddings? Man, whatever Cody Miller was playing at yeah, his he had a great, wedding, great mix. definitely yeah. had me on the dance floor, yeah. stress testing my pants like for <laughs> three well, right? straight hours. Yeah, really well. Great job. And he caught a really great picture of me in a full depth squat 
right in front of his brother-in-law. Uh, I introduced <laughs> myself to the That's family. That's who you were dancing to? Yeah. Dancing apparently, with. that was who I thought was a good idea to dance yeah. to. But, hey. That's good. We've been to several dance parties, the three of us. Mm -hmm. And I bet it would surprise people. Maybe not for you. I think most people would be like, I bet Nikki dances. <laughs> but I bet it would kind of surprise them that Andrew dances. When Cody Miller's dance party started, oh, who man. got the dance started? Oh, man. That's true. This guy. Yeah. That's true. Yep. I'm like, we're good dancing. Time. Honestly, it's the same mindset as the Speedo. I do not care. <laughs> everyone, I don't know how to everyone dance. Everyone gives them a hard time I don't about have dancing any clue so how much. To dance. <laughs> it's all about confidence. I'm like, I'm having fun. I'm dancing with my wife. We're having a blast. Let's get on the dance floor and go. That's the biggest point. That's the key I think to the dancing. The key to just dancing on the dance floor is pretending like there's absolutely nobody else. That's right. right. The moment I wait for, and I've got a pretty good track record of this, is <laughs> at some point in the night, I overhear somebody saying, I want what he's on. <laughs> That's right. But I'm not actually You're on. You're not on anything. Yeah, I'm just dancing. Yeah. Yeah, you just had roast beef earlier and some asparagus mm -hmm. and a couple whiskeys, but otherwise you're good. <laughs> and that's when I know I've, I'm dancing at the appropriate level. Yes, yes. Is, you know. All right. Well, I would love to hear what you guys would want to hear from the DJ, but only if you plan on coming to the block party. By the way, I got to take you guys to the event center last oh, night. Yeah, we so we went to night. dinner, went to Progress last night, which is where the two Michelin star chefs are. We had this great dinner. And then I was like, hey, let's go check out the hotel convention center. And took it, and you guys were like, man, what? it's really nice. We're yeah. in this place out. It's going like, to be pretty yeah. bomb. It's going to be a blast. Lots of little different seating areas for people to break off. Yeah. Indoor, outdoor, pergola, yeah. fire pit, all sorts yeah. of And like stuff. a nice little store if you need to get little snacks. Yep. I think it's going to be perfect. I'm so excited. Outdoor and indoor areas to hang the out. The pool looked like it's nice and warm all yeah, the time nice. and green. And the complex away from even like in the same parking lot as the hotel. It's got a super nice coffee shop. It's got a great barber shop, like a high-end barber shop. Oh, yeah. So you want to come get like a sweet fade before the dance party. Absolutely. It's like great, you can get all that <laughs> you done. You want to get the Barbell Logic icon shaved into your head. That's right. You could do that. <laughs> There's actually a really good chiropractor. We don't have relationships with these people, but there's a great <laughs> chiropractor there. On, oh, wow. I mean, like a sports medicine chiropractor. Loosen up like your awesome. back before the dance party. Yeah, yeah that's right. Or so, after. Yeah, or, yeah, or <laughs> fix your back after you threw it out at the dance party. Whatever. <laughs> I just had this cool feeling and just image, you know, imagining we're all there. Yeah. And the whole place is block party. Block people. Yeah. So you're going around every corner you go around, yeah. every floor of the building. You're just yeah. bumping into the community. I don't know. It just seems like it's going to be a blast. Maybe we should get it like a block theme song. And that's what we should dance to at 11 o'clock at night. Which one could it be? If you're listening to this and you're good at this sort of thing, we're looking for a good block dance song. You could, <laughs> we could even sample like, could be, you know, like an Earth, Wind and Fire song or something. And we'll just like put our own words to it. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite songs from a reunion party that I go to every year with my college group is uh, Gin and Juice cover by The Gourds. That's my favorite. You've heard this song? Oh, yeah. Like, the, nice. like, yes. It's amazing. Yeah. It's like a bluegrass version of Gin and like Juice. That. That's so <laughs> much trouble in the LBC. It's, it's kind of hard, hard being Snoop D O Double G. <laughs> but I somehow, <laughs> some way, keep coming on funky ass beat <laughs> every single day. <laughs> Can so I get good. a little something? So, oh, if you want See? some more yeah, of that. Yeah, look at us. If you want some more of that. <laughs> that's, that's a little taste you want a little bluegrass new dog Andrew and Matt got party. you going so we'll see you guys at the block party first week in August All right, that's it? it awesome thank you for your questions you can always ask questions we'll put them in the show notes you can check it out at the bottom of this just scroll down wherever you're listening Overcast or wherever you listen to Spotify we'd love a five star review and we will see you next Monday Woo.